this evening. Oh, good to us, bro. And, and we love the fellowship. Yeah. We love it, bro. We love this singing. I even love to hear Victor sing. Yeah. Come on. That's the man that's giving his whole heart. Amen. Yes. But we absolutely love to get on into the Word of God. Yeah. You know, go ahead and turn into 2 Timothy. Timothy. Come on, come on. And, uh, you know, today was a pretty interesting day. Amen. <laughs> Because it started raining and thundering and storming outside. And you go outside in the morning, it was pretty warm out. Yeah. And then I, we go and I do a study with, with Jack right there. I go out back outside, it's cold outside. And it's so funny because, you know, last time it was raining, I started the fireplace at our place. And uh, Ella was like super fired up. Yeah. And so it started raining again today. And what does Ella do? She goes to the fireplace and starts pointing at the fire. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. I can just imagine. She's like, Dad, it's right. We, we need the fire right now. Spirit. Yeah. You know, there's something that's so satisfying about fire, is it? Yeah. Yeah. That you go out camping. Anybody been camping in here? Yeah. Yeah. You just love to sit around the campfire. Yeah. If you like me, you like to stoke it. You like to put wood on it. You like to play with it a little bit, yeah. the marshmallows. You just love some fire. Yeah. For those who maybe don't like camping, maybe you got a fireplace in your house and it's the same thing right there. Yeah. Oh. But there's just something that's so satisfying about fire. You know, this is still the year of the Spirit. Yeah. It's still the year of the Spirit, and I think we've definitely seen that as we've gone from just 17 plantings to now the Spirit blown 28 church plantings this year. referred to as several different things in the Bible. Mm. Yeah. It's referred to a river. Yeah. It's referred to wind. Mm. And we're going to see this as four disciples are going to go to Houston in just a couple months to shovel their hands. We're attending church. The Spirit is referred to as oil. It's referred to vaguely as several other things, but something that it is mentioned as many times in the Bible is fire. Yes. Yes. You know, in Exodus, how does God go to Moses and reveal himself? It's in a bush that was burning with fire. Yes. When he's leading him through the desert, what does he appear to them as? A pillar of fire. He goes to meet Moses on Mount Sinai, and what happens is that fire comes down on the mountain, and God is in the fire right now. Yeah. Yeah. And in 1 Kings 18, how does God answer Elijah? It's with fire. Yeah. Acts chapter 2, yeah. how does the Spirit come on the apostles? It's with tongues of fire right there. Yeah. And the title of my lesson this evening is simply, The Spirit's Fire. Yeah. Yeah. Good time, bro. You know, this is the expectation of every single disciple. Yes, please. That you and I, we become disciples. Yes. We study the Bible and it really like smacks us in the face. Oh, Amen. It, it steps on your toes right yes. now. Oh, it takes it on the face. It's like, man, I wasn't taught this growing up. Yeah. Never. But that's what the Bible says. Yeah. And you become a disciple, you accept the truth, and then you get baptized. And aren't you just full of fire when you get out of those waters? Yeah. Yeah. I remember getting baptized 2015 at UCLA, Whoa. and I came up out of the waters, and I was like, God, I, I don't need anything else. Whoa. I was playing football. I was like, I'll give up football right now. I don't need, no, I just need me and you. We're good. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, which is a spirit of fire. Yes. And that every disciple would be fired on up. And isn't it kind of shocking the first time you come at the church with a bunch of sold out disciples? Oh, on yeah. And you come out. And you're a little freaked out right there. Right. Why are these people so excited? I don't know. This is, it's a little intense. Just tone it down a little bit. Oh, I don't know anywhere in the Bible where the spirit is toned down. Yeah. This, is just, this, is, this is different to me. This is the spirit of God. Amen. Yeah. And it's totally different than churches that you grew up going to. Yes. I grew up going to church wanting to fall asleep every single Sunday. It was boring, bro. It was Every Sunday, I was like knocking out. I was like, I want to. I'd rather play sick and miss church than go to church. Yeah. 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 
Because then at least I can like play video games and be a little excited right there. No, no. And then you come to the kingdom of God. The church has sold out disciples and people are excited. They're fired up. Yeah. It's, it's not boring at all. You're like, what is going on? This is the spirit of God in the kingdom of God. Let's show up to the kingdom of God. Challenge. Once fired up doesn't mean always fired up. No. Oh, yeah. 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 That's true. Once fired up doesn't mean you're always fired up because you can you can lose the spirit's fire. Yeah. The, the spirit is a deposit for us, guaranteeing that we're gonna get to heaven. But you can put that fire out. You can quench the spirit. And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight. Amen? I got three points for us. Amen? It's 2 Timothy chapter 1. In verse 3, it says, I thank God whom I serve, as my ancestors did, with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you. So that it may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois. Amen. Come on, Lois. And in your mother Eunice. And I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God. Right here, Paul is writing to Timothy. And he said, hey, you've got the gift of God. What is the gift of God? Acts oh. chapter 2, repent, be baptized, forgiveness of sins, and you'll get the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh. Yes. Yes. What is the gift? It's the Spirit of God. Yes. And he was saying, Timothy, you've got to fan it into flame. Yeah. That you've been given the Spirit, yep. Yep. but you've got to stoke it. You're responsible. You're the steward of the Spirit inside of you, yes. and it's your responsibility if you're going to be fired up or you're not going to be fired up. Yeah. And you've got to fan it into flame. You know, our first point this evening is fan it into flame. Come on. Fan it into flame. Come on, bro. Yeah, I love how it describes the spirit in verse 7. It says, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. But it gives us power, love, and self-discipline. The spirit is a spirit of power. Yes. It is a spirit of boldness. Yes. It is a spirit of zeal. Yes. Yes. It is a spirit of self-control, love, and of fire right there. Woo. So here's the thing. If you're not feeling powerful tonight, if you're feeling timid tonight, if you're not feeling confident, you are simply not walking in step with the spirit. Oh. Oh. That is, it, you may be walking with the spirit, it's just not the spirit of God. Oh. Oh. And we've got to fan it into flame. Yes. You know, it's your responsibility if you're going to be fired up or not. Yeah. It's nobody else's responsibility. You've got to fan it into flame. You've got to stoke the fire, the flame that's been given to you. You know, why did he have to write to Timothy to tell him this in verse 8? Explain it. says, so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me as prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel mm. wow. by the power of God. Let's go. So what was Timothy going through? He was going through some suffering. Yes. He was going through some suffering. And as a result of this suffering, he was starting to feel ashamed of the gospel of God. Oh. That's it. And, and he was being ashamed of Paul. Wait, what? He's like, man, I, just, I, I don't really know Paul like that. Oh, that's, that's not, that's not my guy right there. Oh. He was going to, because he was going through suffering. Yeah. Do you know that every Christian is actually destined for a life of suffering? That's reality. The problem is today that we've got so many places that preach about prosperity gospel. Yeah. Woo! Prosperity gospel is not in the Bible. Right. That, that's a false doctrine so that you'll give a lot of money to the church so the preacher will get rich and have a jet and a mansion and a car and all these things. And then he's going to say, hey, God's going to bless you because you gave me all this money. There's no such thing as prosperity gospel in the Bible. Yeah. But we're so ingrained with this because it's our society that we live in today that we get into the kingdom and we're fired up. Yeah. But the first sense of hardship that we go through, like, man, something must be wrong with this. Oh, my goodness. Something must be wrong because if I'm a Christian, I'm never going to suffer. Oh, okay, well, what does Jesus say? Follow me. Yeah. 
What did Jesus go through? He died on a cross. And as Christians, as real disciples, we are destined for a life of suffering. What can stop you from fanning into flame? What can stop the spirit from being on fire inside of you? Suffering and hardship. Not that you're going to go through it, but it's your perspective when you go through it. Yes. That you start to get ashamed. Yeah. You start getting ashamed of the gospel. Amen, bro. Ashamed of discipleship. Come on. Yeah. Ashamed of disciples. Yeah. Ashamed of the kingdom. Never. Bro. And you're like, man, I just don't know. And so what happens, the spirit starts to die inside of you a little bit. Oh. It starts to die. You know what really kills the spirit? It's when you're not walking in step with the spirit. Right. In Galatians, it says, walk in step with the spirit. So that means, hey, Jesus is Lord. Yeah. That's what every single one of us said. Yeah. Yeah. Which means that, guess what? Jesus is actually in control of us. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever he wants to, to do with you, we're supposed to let him do. Yeah. Yes. Please. Disciples are going to go anywhere, do anything, and give up everything. That is the standard of the Bible right there. Yeah. And the point in time that you start saying no to the Spirit oh, is the point in time that the Spirit starts dwindling in you. Oh, oh, you know what it's like. We've all been there. Oh, yeah. Thanks. You feel a little urge to share your faith with somebody. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know. That's an intimidating guy right there. Oh, yeah. tall, bro. Six, four, six, 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 four, six, four. Blonde hair. Looks like Thor. You know? oh, <laughs> that's scary. I don't know. That's scary. I don't know about that. Another sense of this, how do you quench the Spirit when you disobey the Bible? Come on, man. When you disobey God's Word. Why? Because God's Spirit desires to do what God tells us to do. Yeah. yeah. We're just a temple. Yeah. We're just a vessel. The Spirit of God lives inside of it. It is God's very Spirit that desires to do what God wants to do. Yeah. And He wants to use you to do it. Yeah. But when we disobey the Word of God... We stop fanning the spirit into flame, yeah. and we start putting the spirit's fire out. Yeah. How can you tell this is you? You're not very zealous. Whoa. Whoa. You're not very Whoa. zealous. Whoa. Reach that, bro. I know what time of year it is, guys. It's Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving time. We're thinking about turkey in our mouth. I can't wait. Hopefully, I have that coming right above the fireplace. It's really great. And yet what's happening right now is that a lot of us are going through suffering. You got school is like really heating up right there. You're like, I I feel like I'm on fire. I just don't know if it's a fire of the spirit. It's a fire of my flesh. Or maybe it's the fire of the finances. You're like, man. Or man, maybe it's the fire of relationships that you might be alone on Thanksgiving and Christmas right there. Maybe that's the fire you're feeling right there. Praise God for the kingdom of God. Amen. But you've got to change your perspective. Here's the truth, guys. Your worst day in the kingdom. Right. It's better than your best day in the world. No. It's not terrible. It's not good. Some of us are discouraged of some small stuff, guys. Like, no. I made it, it rain today. I can't believe it really rained hard. And there was thunder. I was scared of the thunder. And God must not be with me because of this. I give it. got to be those that obey the word of God no matter what, that we keep in step with the Spirit, that as we do this, we live by this, we're not going to be those who are lacking in zeal, like you go to another church and that's what it is, but we're going to be on fire for God because we're fading into fire. You have not been keeping in step with the Spirit. Jesus was never lacking in zeal. The Spirit is never lacking in zeal. Right. 
Now, we can go through hard times, but our perspective has to be in the right spot. That, man, this is good for me. God is with me. I'm a disciple. Again, I'm saved right here. I'm going to go. I should be fired on up. Never be lacking in zeal. Amen? Yeah. Leviticus chapter 6. And in verse 8. In verse 8. We got a fan into playing this spirit. What else do we got to do? In verse 8, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Give Aaron and his sons this command. These are the regulations for the burnt offering. The burnt offering is to remain on the altar of earth throughout the night until morning, and the fire must be kept burning on the altar. The priest shall then put on his linen clothes with linen undergarments next to his body and shall remove the ashes of the burnt offering that the fire has consumed on the altar and place them beside the altar. Then he has to take off those clothes and put on others and carry the ashes outside the camp to a place that is ceremonially clean. The fire on the altar must be kept burning. It must not go out. Every morning the priest is at firewood and arrange the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat of the fellowship offerings on it. The fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. Right here, it's talking about the burnt offering. There's a lot here. Yes. You could say that, you know, the Bible talks about what, what is a living sacrifice? It's us. Yeah. And so the sacrifice has to be on the altar. And what does it need to do? It needs to be consumed by the fire. <laughs> consumed. You and I as a that we should be consumed by the fire of God, by the Spirit of God. But it says the fire has to be burning continuously. The expectation for God is that the fire would not go out. It doesn't matter what the weather is outside. It doesn't matter what hardship we're going through. It doesn't matter what the situations or circumstances are. The fire needs to be kept burning. Amen? And how is it going to keep on burning? It says you've got to add wood to the fire oh. every single morning. Oh. you got to add this every morning. Yeah. You know, let's talk about quiet time for a yeah. oh. You know, we, we live in a culture often where the Bible is just a good book to have that's on the shelf that collects a lot of dust. And you, you have one, but you don't have to read it, and you don't have to obey it, and you don't have to know what it says, but it's just a good book right there. And maybe maybe you should, like, know one verse, like John 3.16 or something. Oh! Wait, what? Maybe that. And maybe, you know, you, that's it. And yet, how do we keep the, the fire burning? What is the wood for us? It's our time with God every wow. single day. Yeah. Guys, that we get to wake up and spend time with the creator of the universe. Yeah. I can't stand when people say the Bible's boring. I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe you're reading the King James Version. I don't know. Understand it like that, you know what I mean? Although Psalms and King James is beautiful. Yes, bro. But people who say the Bible is boring just simply have not read the Bible and don't understand the Bible. The Bible's not boring. You're boring. Oh! We're, we're, not, we're not reading the same book. We're not reading the same thing right here. Because if you can understand what we get to do every morning, guys, you get to go spend time. With the creator of all things, yeah. who knit you and made you in your mother's womb, wow. yes. who knows every single hair on your head. For some of us, that's less than others. Amen. Brandon, Brandon has nothing to worry about. <laughs> me, me, I'm trying to hang on a little bit. Amen. God is good. We, we get to spend time. We get to spend time. <laughs> With God every single day. And what does this do? It keeps the fire burning inside of you. It keeps your fire going. Yes. I'm super concerned for disciples who don't have quiet times. I'm so concerned because there's so much wrong. Your perspective's off. We don't have to have quiet times. We get to have quiet times. Do you, do you understand? 
the trouble that it took to just get this? Oh, in the first church, really. you didn't have electricity. You had to be reading this by candlelight. There were people trying to kill you. You didn't have it in a book floor right there. You had scrolls that were separate. And we get to have this? We're just too entitled. And we're too privileged. Oh, we're too entitled. Even in the Philippines today, most of the disciples don't even have a physical Bible. Because it's just not, it's not available like that over there. And we get to read every day. We get to do that. You should be excited every morning to find new nuggets and new insights. And, hey, yes. and you wonder why you're struggling. Because you're not keeping the fire burning. We forget them. You're not keeping the fire burning. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Keep the fire burning right here. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. In verse 16, it says, Rejoice when the interest is mutual. Rejoice when you're doing really good in all your classes. Oh, Rejoice when the finances are going really well. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, don't, I don't see it say that. Yeah. Rejoice always. Yeah. Pray when you're feeling like it. Oh, yeah. Pray continually. Yeah. Give thanks in all circumstances. Yeah. Yes. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirits. Do not quench the spirits. In our second point this evening, keep the fire burning. Come on! Keep the fire burning. How do you do this? You have to live out God's will for your life. Our purpose is to make disciples. Yes. That's our purpose. But that's not God's will for us. God's will for us is to rejoice always, pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. Yep, in and out. That this is what God desires for each each and every one of us every single day. Yeah. Do you know how irreverent it is to be discouraged? Right. Do you know how irreverent, irreverent it is? If you're discouraged as a disciple, it means that the cross is not enough for you. Oh. That's what it means. It means that you take your eyes off the cross. And Jesus' death is not enough for you anymore. Oh, yeah. And so other things have gotten in there and they've stolen your joy. That's not God's will for you. God wants you to be fired up because you have a relationship with him every single day. Preach that. Preach that. And he says, pray continually. How do you keep the fire burning? You're praying continually right there. Right? Yeah. You know, I'll never forget being in the East Region of L.A. Nice. And it's in Pomona. And something that's out there that we don't have here are mountains. Oh, <laughs> It's not hard to move mountains in Texas because there are no mountains in Texas. Joel, Joel goes to indoor mountains. They make it. Not to artificial mountains. Plastic mountains. But I never forget, I was going up to the mountaintop while it was still dark every morning. This is before daylight saving time when it got dark. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when it got light out earlier, amen? Bro, it was beautiful. And I'd go up and I get to spend time with God every single day. Wow. And to see all of L.A., to see all of the parts of the Inland Empire, the valley right there, and get to see that all that God had made. Yeah. And to know that that was only 1% or less of his creation on this earth. Wow. wow. The mountains, the, the, the greenery, the ocean. And to connect with God every single day. Yeah. You know, but then as life went on, I stopped going to that prayer spot. Yeah. I got busier. Right. Life sped up, kids, all that stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and, my, and my prayer started getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And you know what was the same with that? My joy started dropping. And the, I was not, like, fired up. When you're not fired up, the kingdom becomes a drag to you. Yeah. It does. This becomes a burden. Like, man, I gotta go to Devo again. Whoa. Hey, I gotta do this. That's that's a perspective of somebody who's not connected with God and is not keeping their fire burning. But I'm fired up and I'm excited because I'm looking at a room full of sold out disciples. And we gotta keep the fire burning. Why is this important? Because we're coming up to.
into the holiday season, yeah. right? And Satan has a campaign to take you out. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? The holiday season is the hardest time as a disciple. Yes. Satan has a, a campaign to take you out. And what is the way that he's going to achieve this? If you stop getting into scriptures and prayer every single day and you let your fire stop burning. Yes. And we got to keep the fire burning. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12. Let's close out here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's keep going. Hebrews chapter 12. In verse 29. And there's a lot here. It's a beautiful passage. But verse 29. It says, For our God is a consuming fire. Come on. You know, we serve God who is a fire. And he's just not like a small fire. He's not a, a medium-sized fire. He is a consuming yeah. fire. Yeah. And he wants to consume everything about our life. That our life, we're not trying to fit God into anything. No, no that God is our everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everything else fits into the picture right there. But God consumes. Yeah. Our last point this evening is the fire always spreads. Ooh. The fire always spreads. How do we do this? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 20. Come on, bro. What do we spread? What do we spread? Jeremiah chapter 20. Jeremiah chapter 20. Come on, bro. Get an amen when you guys get there. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 7. It says, You deceived me, Lord. Oh! And I was deceived. Jeremiah was in uh, praying right there, you know? He was in having a quiet He was getting open, bro. He overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me, and I know we can relate to that as some sold out disciples. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I speak, I cry out proclaiming violence and destruction. The same message back then is the same one today. Yes, it is. it's relevant. That the world is lost and dying. It's not all good outside. And disciples, we got to go and save this lost world. Amen? So the word of the Lord has brought me insult and reproach all day long. Yep. He, was, he, he wanted to stop speaking God's words. Man. He was struggling yep. with the suffering that was happening because of it. But if I say I will not mention his words or speak anymore in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it. Indeed, I cannot. Yeah. Jeremiah had an incredible reality Facts. that the word of God was in his bones. And it wasn't there to sit or to stay. It was like a fire yeah. that he was passionate about it. And he said, man, I just, I can't hold this in. I've got to get out. Yeah, come on. What was he doing? He was spreading the fire. Yeah. Yes, he was. He was spreading God's word. That was a consuming fire. Amen? Yeah. Come on. Come on. You know, I love what Samuel Adams once said back in the revolution here in America. And he said, it does not take a majority to prevail. But rather an irate, tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. Yeah. Samuel Adams played a huge part in giving us the freedom that we have today. Yeah. That they stood up against the opposition. And because they fought, they weren't the majority, but they were irate, they were tireless, and they were keen on setting brush fires of freedom wow. in the minds of men. And because of that, you and I share the very freedom that we have today. That we have all these incredible rights in this great land of the USA. But there's a greater freedom than the one that we have. And it's spiritual freedom. That this world is dark. Satan is real. There's an enemy. And he is advancing and taking people to hell every single day. That's the truth. And if you don't believe that, you don't believe the Bible. And we are the, not the majority, we're the minority. Yeah. But let me tell you something. We're irate. Yeah. If you know, this, know what that means, go look it up. Oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> we're, we're tireless. Yeah. And we are absolutely keen on setting brush yeah. to free. Yeah. Yeah. This is who we are. We're setting brush to freedom on the minds of students here at UTA. Yeah. We're doing the same thing 
at UTV and the fire, the fire always spreads. We're gonna get to UNT. Yeah. Then we're gonna get to TCU. Then we're gonna get to SMU and every other campus here in the yeah. Metroplex is going to keep us taking attention on the home. to spread it. If we don't, who else is? Yeah. And it's awesome that the fire is spread to two more men tonight. Yeah. We must understand the Spirit's fire. That we have to fan it into flame. If you are lacking zeal or struggling with hardship, you have to change your perspective. We have to keep the fire burning. You have to let the fire consume you. There's no half in, half out to discipleship. There's no 50% discipleship. Jesus did not get 50% on the cross. He calls us to be all in, totally committed. And we got to keep the fire burning, especially over this holiday season. Amen? Yeah. And as we do this, guess what's going to happen? The fire is going to continue to spread. Let's understand the Spirit's fire and keep the fire burning. Love you guys very much.